have it. Sean, you have a task to turn on transcription somehow. All right. I can never figure out how to do that. Elizabeth knows like in one second. Yeah. <laughs> you and I never know. <laughs> All right. Well, welcome. It's uh it's the same day for everybody. It's Tuesday. Uh yes. <laughs> which is great. Uh this is the metrics model meeting for February 28th. It's great to have you here. Uh Sean has been putting the minutes in the chat. Thank you, Sean. If you could click on that and add yourself, that would be great. Um, feel free to keep your camera on, camera off. Absolutely no problem. So uh today we have the agenda so thanks for folks for putting it in oh great i'm glad you put that in there yahoo the, yep. the compass the compass stuff so we'll get there um yep. absolutely no problem so the first i just wanted to look at a few of our prs and issues that we have open in the metrics model uh, repository so one is just a pr that i opened this morning um, it's just updating the README a bit. We had some old dead links just because of the website update. It was pointing to some participate pages that don't exist anymore. I updated our copyright, um, link to the license, all that kind of stuff. So I also, we had kind of talked about this. I don't know what other people think, but this, these two sections of contributors, this was linking nowhere. So I'm not sure quite what that was about. Um, and then we had our list of maintainers and I, I just removed it. This is a, a list of people that were, that we had originally set up across the working groups and we're not doing a good job of keeping it updated. <laughs> so no. to me, it just, I don't know, it seems silly to try to hold on to it if it's just kind of out of date. I don't know what other people think. I can add it back if y'all want, but. But uh, actually, I'm I'm fine with that because there's there's no fixed person who like you, myself, you and June should attend this meeting. Like everybody from chaos should uh, are welcome to attend this meeting. So yeah, there's no means to who should take responsibility to do something <laughs> in our meeting. That's kind of how I feel. I don't know. What about others? Usually, usually the maintainers is a list of people who should be merging the PRs within this um, working group. So it's not really about attendance of meetings. It's it's who do we want? Who do we want to be responsible for um, doing a review before we before we merge a PR? Um, you know, that's how we tend to use it in other open source projects. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I have mixed feelings. I agree. It's it's hard to maintain, especially given just the the type of project that we are. Um, in general, it is best practice within open source projects to have a list of maintainers, so that if somebody's PR gets stalled or something happens, people know who to contact. Uh, we're a small enough community. Maybe that's not a problem. I don't know. I can see pros and cons either way. Okay. I don't have any strong, strong opinions, but those are that's generally right. how I think about it. Okay. It's helpful. I think a lot for our maintainers, kind of to that point, Don, is we, we have a lot of people in and out of this project too. And that's, it's a lot a part of that too. So like sometimes we'll have, for example, Google Summer of Code students being maintainers for on, on like particular aspects of things they're working on and then they rotate out. Um, anyway, it just moves pretty quickly. And that, may, that might be to your point, the nature of the project. Elizabeth, how are you doing? I'm, I'm here. Hey, good morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You are here. <laughs> it's good to have you here. All right. I mean, I guess I'm kind of, I understand your the point. I guess I kind of lean towards just removing it, but. Um, I, 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 I agree with Don. I, I think. <clears throat> It's helpful to know who to communicate with when your PR is stalled. But instead of keep these three persons here, maybe we should, uh, you know, maintain this list to add more people who 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 would be more active in this year and help us to review the you know metrics metrics model. We can add them into our uh, maintain list. Okay. To 
how about this then? I'll add them back in, but then maybe in the next metrics model meeting, we can like ask all of the working groups just to take a minute to define for the year who they think the maintainers, what's the best representation of maintainers to their best, to their best guess. Yeah. Okay. That sounds good. So I'll, let me add that back in. Um, okay, great. Thank you. Um, and then one of the other problems is, is there's a link to a contributing file in the um, in the GitHub repo. Well, it's a it's a not a great file. So anyway, you know how sometimes when you change stuff and it creates a cascade series of events of things that need to be changed. We need to update our contributing file because it's just horrible. Um, so anyway, also on that. Uh -huh. uh, in, in, in other group, in, in other work group, do they have also to update their, uh, their maintainer like this? Yeah, For, I'll, I'll, I think what we can do is we can ask the other working groups just to spend five minutes in their meetings just to identify people who they would list as maintainers. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Um, thank you. I will, I will update that, and then I'm going to work on contributing. Okay. Uh, question about this con contributing markdown file. Should yeah. we uh, update it like um, specific for the metrics model, right? Or... Well, that's just it. So right now, it. Is okay, there. it says similarly like uh, what we done for the metrics. Uh, but we we had kind of talked, Elizabeth, do you remember this at all? Like we had kind of talked about getting rid of all of this Git stuff and just saying, if you want to contribute, you know, attend a meeting, here's a link to our repository, here's a link to discourse. Like you can contribute, just start by joining and then you can contribute to 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 metrics, you can contribute to software. Like this, all of this stuff is really detailed as to how to make a contribution that you can go get on the internet. Yeah, and I'm wondering if we should <clears throat> have one that's like a template for all the working groups since contributing is the same across. Yes, I think so. We can so. even pull from the handbook <clears throat> that we're already using. And the handbook to Don's, the handbook points to this. So oh. if you click on the contributing template in the like knowledge base, mm -hmm. it says thanks. Here's a link, and it okay. takes you where Don just took us. No, yeah. this, is, this is the one for common. Um, so this is just what we happen to have in common, and I linked to it because I think some of the key things that are missing out of the um, contributing guide for the metrics model are things like DCO, for example. Right, and but we do have that in the how to contribute section of the community, so uh, I'm not sure how we want to do it. This is nice, though. I like this because we have another DCO DCO document in the handbook. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. It doesn't have these nice graphics. This is nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know who did this. I didn't actually do this bit, um, but it seems pretty helpful. Um, what do you think about this stuff? I, I don't like that. I think I, I agree with you. I should, you should just link to that. But lots of people put them in the contributing guides, and I don't think that they're very useful. Okay. Because the people either know how to do all of this, in which case I'm never going to look at that, um, or there are people who don't know how to do all of this who are going to need more information than just this. <laughs> this <thing>. isn't helpful. <laughs> so it's yeah. not helpful for anybody, um, as far as I'm I'm concerned. I agree. Yes. Okay, so maybe the, the, the order of events would be to go to this one, because this is, oh, actually, this is in common. There is one that's in the community, and it, it's this. And so I can update the one in the community towards this with an eye on removing some of this kind of stuff right in here. Yeah, it might be worth looking across all of the um, all of I, the contributing files that we have in the various working groups, because I'm sure that the different ones have different um, things that are useful and not useful. And I, I I totally will. And then if we could get that just as a central in the community, and then we can just link to that out of our readme's. Okay. Well. Okay. Great. Thank you. But we will still. We won't want to just link to them out of the readme's. We want to have a contribute.md file. 
you do want that in each. Yeah. yeah. GitHub okay. looks for that. You lose, I don't know, points or something for not having it. Oh, um, if you yeah. link out to it. Okay. Yeah. It if makes you just, a complete like, project. It, it expects to see a contributing.md file in every every repository. Um, the way, so the way that we do this in some projects is we have, it's, it's okay to have like a template um, contributing file, maybe in the community repo and the beginning uh -huh. of all of the contributing.md files point to, um, point to that. Okay. But then there's always additional context, like the metrics models, for example, are a little bit different, like the place that you put them and where you do the PR. And so I think that, you know, we can have sort of a, if you're interested in contributing to chaos, please start here and link to whatever we want our main one to be. But then I think, you know, and specifically for metrics models, here are the additional things okay. that you need to know. Um, and then the same thing maybe for, you know, for common or risk or some of the other working groups, there might be some specific things that they should think about. Yeah, I agree. Matt, you could ask, oh, sorry, you I didn't mean to cut you off. Um, no, Matt, no, I, was no, just, I, agree. I was just gonna say, if we want to have something like if you're brand new to chaos, start here and then point them to that newcomer quick start that we have, mm. like in general. I don't know, just a thought. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Okay, I think I got that in the notes here. So a template in the community repo, each work group can link to this template or this, this kind of base document and then provide additional context that's relevant to the work group um, in their own repo. Okay, sounds good, thank you. All right, um, issues. I just want to take a look at these real fast. Um, all right, so we have a couple. There was a new one um, opened. So we have this one, remember this one? Uh, this this guy jumped up into our metrics model meeting a couple just one time, if I remember correctly. And after that, that he just disappeared. I don't know he he's 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 gonna continually working with us or they just pop up some ideas about KPR, OKR, something like that mm -hmm. around the model. So this was around. I think Don, you were even part of this conversation at one point. Like, okay. Yeah, yeah, I think I was just I was just coming off mute because I'm pretty sure that the same person popped into the common metrics working group with yeah. a similar um uh similar Our pitch company. for kind of OKR metrics. This I'll is be just... honest, I think that these are more corporate metrics than um open source project health metrics. I'm not yeah. I'm not sure that I see the value in okay in these just from my personal standpoint yep yeah somebody somebody has to translate that inside their company when they need to they're only parts of it okay yeah the other problem i had with this just with this issue is it's um so many links out to so many things. <laughs> yeah, it's more like a it's a blog it's a blog post or a series of tweets or something. I'm not yeah, I'm not sure how to like focus it down to we, a, a we thing. Do recommend some some papers to to let me to 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 go through that. I do read some wild thing. It's it's a kind of give give you some suggestions or, or ideas around in OKR. Connect with uh, connect with open source metrics, but uh, I don't think it's uh, our current focus. It seems like it might be a good candidate for a, <clears throat> a discourse conversation because it didn't seem like there was really much to be resolved there. I, in my in my opinion. Okay, no, you're right. There, there was nothing to action <laughs> or too many things. Um. Okay, great, thank you. 
Um, another issue, Sean, this is one from you. Do you remember this one? Mm -hmm. Do you want to think about it? I'm not sure actually how um, this necessarily applies just to the metrics model working group. Okay. Job opportunities is a metric that exists in, yeah. I think. Yeah, I, I think so. Well, no, it was in value. I'm sorry. It was, it was one of the old value metrics. Yeah, I, I, I'm... I think it's okay to close it. Okay. Thank you. Um, and then June, I think you just opened this one recently. Mm, oh. this Maybe we we'll have to update uh, uh, the package version, then we will close this. Let me see. So is what is this? Do you, do you oh, remember right. what that is related I, I to? I remember that. You know, we have some uh, implementation of metrics model under our metrics model. Using yep. Jupyter. Jupyter notebooks, yeah. yeah. They import some some lower version of this Git Python package. So mm -hmm. it's work we need to do just to uh, upgrade the version of this package. That would solve this problem. Yeah, I, uh, I will update this package version tomorrow. Then I will okay. close this issue. Okay, great. Okay. Great. Thanks, June. Okay, awesome. Thank you, everybody. Um, okay, so that was uh, PR. We made some progress. Issues made some progress. Cool. Great. Um, on the list was a sustainability metrics model. Did some, I don't think I put that there in the. <laughs> okay. Is this added here? Or... It's possible. Um, all right, well then I'm going to uh, put that to the side for just a second because we have other things that we can get to. And if we have time, we'll come back to that and try to sort that out. Um, I did take a look at the community welcomingness metric model. If you recall, we had a bunch of metrics in there. Uh, so a few things that I did. Sean, to your point, do you remember there were some risk metrics that were kind mm -hmm. of hanging out in there? Yeah. So I at least pulled those out and started a starter risk model or metric just to kind of get them yeah. somewhere else. And I do have them in the spreadsheet too. Like, so this is not a right. template at all. I just wanted to capture that. Okay. And at, least, least, at least get it started. Yeah. And so um, Don, basically we had this this community welcomingness metrics model, and it contained these um, whatever two, four, seven metrics right here, plus all of these. So it was becoming kind of overloaded from a metrics model perspective. So the suggestion was to pull these out and create a new starter risk metric model that just kind of focuses on these things. So that's what's going on here. Um, honestly, when I when I did this, and I do want people's feedback at this point, when I did this these metrics didn't just like jump out to me as indicating whether or not a community is welcoming. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> like issue age response, I don't know. It just, they didn't, they just didn't do that for me. I don't know what people's thoughts are. Like welcomingness is not, anyway, I'll stop talking. <laughs> yeah, and, and online, Quick responses and then open source in particular, quick responses are associated with sustained engagement. So um, 
I can I can see that the those those are metrics that you could use as proxies for welcoming this. What are other people's thoughts? Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I have, I have mixed feelings, right? So like, I get, I get Matt's comment that these really aren't, this, these aren't about welcoming new people into your community. Um, but they're sort of the flip side of that. So how do you make people feel unwelcome in your community when they submit an issue and no one looks at it for a year? Um, so, so I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure what to do with these. We do tend to consider most of these metrics as a part of um, like things you should look at if you're trying to grow your community and um, sustain your your existing momentum within your community. These are things that we encourage people to look at. So like the basically the response time sort of sort of metrics. So they're important, um, but not, yeah. I don't know. I don't know about welcomingness, like as a as a title. Yeah, I don't know. I have feelings. I have feelings about activity that should be just um, reflect uh, about welcomingness. Like like all of you mentioned, issue age, response time, enforced response time. Uh, what what about the rest of the part? Uh, I mean, new contributors. Does it mean more contributors come coming to this uh, come to this community, which means it's more welcoming? Decline. Okay. Does that yeah, help? these these feel more like sustainability, community sustainability metrics. Okay. To um, I mean, I would think that welcomingness might be more um, like, are you are you greeting people? Are there um, are there good onboarding documents yes, for brand new users? Does your contributing guide actually have everything in it that you actually need to contribute? Like, how do you build your dev environment? Um, those are ones that I would think of more on the side of, of welcomingness than, than what you have here. I, but I think these are, this would be an excellent metrics model more around like sustaining the community. But but when I look at look at the user stories, I mean the last case as a, as an organization, I mean it's not just a welcoming to the new new individual people, but also for the organizations. Which means it's not just uh, you know activity or code. It, the the metrics you 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 removed about the license, which is license friendly for corporations, which is more related to the corporation where companies, from my understanding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, th I think we were looking at you know since this was first proposed. The, we've kind of evolved our thinking about not overloading the, the models with seven or eight metrics. Mm -hmm. So I think I think we're, we were talking about how to divide the metrics there into the more discrete, specific metric models. Mm -hmm. So I, I um... Okay, so I what I'm hearing is perhaps this could be reframed as sustainability, community sustainability, um, welcomingness. I liked how you were putting it, Don. Like I think of the things we do in the Chaos Project, like having the newbie bot in Slack, like the office hours, making sure that we have guides for how people can contribute or like join meetings, that kind of stuff. Um, all the stuff that I think a lot of what Elizabeth and Ruth do to, yeah. to bring new people into the community. Okay. Is everybody okay with maybe changing this to community sustainability? Yeah, that that's what folks think. 
I think um, I would avoid the word sustainability because every time I see it, it causes confusion because people oh, don't know if you're talking about environmental sustainability or contributor sustainability. It means um, everything and nothing. <laughs> so we we have this problem in the CNCF um, all the time. Um, so give me a word. Uh, really, really, it's our responsiveness. We look at it as so it depends on depends on how you want to take this this metric, right? So um, contributor growth is one way to look at it. Community growth. Um, which implies sustainability because people are kind of sticking around um, over the long term. But it's but when you're talking about growth, that is a little bit different because then you're talking about specifically like increasing things as opposed to sustaining things. Um, yeah. I mean, or you could be specific and say, you know, can contributor sustainability or sustaining contributions. Um, I like that because that gets rid of sustainability. Yeah. Um, like that. Something like that. I'm bad at wordsmithing. Well, I get, I get the point. <laughs> I'll come back with more to the group, but I get, I understand your point. All right. Um, oops. Okay, great. Um, that's helpful. This is great. Um, okay. All right, great. Great. Um, any other comments on? On this, again, the starter risk model, I'll I'll start getting that into the template here shortly. All right. Um, Yuhui, I'm gonna turn it over to you on this pull request, if that's okay. Sure. Uh, maybe you can just uh, open up, yes, this pull request. Yeah, based on the the metrics model, uh, this starter project here's metrics model, my colleague, Shengbao has helped us to implement this model uh, under Compass. And, uh, you know, from the Compass, uh, from the metrics model, we, uh, we defined four metrics uh, initially, but, uh, uh, you know, in some metrics, um, it's actually related to two things. For, for one is for issue, the other is for the, uh, the pull request or change request. So we added uh, this actual metrics. So finally, it's come up six metrics in total in this uh, in this metrics model. If you yeah open up this metrics model, if you scroll down, um, yeah, you can you you can see that all the uh, the poll requires the first response time. And issue first response time. Yep. So because in, in our metrics model, we only mentioned the first response. That doesn't, doesn't point out which first response. I I remember in our metrics model, it uh, it mentioned that it could be an issue or or per request. So 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 I we added then two. So and you just also split that out is what it sounds like. You just split it into. I'm guessing the metric model had just response time, and you just split it out to issue and PR. Yeah, and also about uh, the uh, the close time. It could be the issue close time and uh, and the pull request close time. So mm -hmm. we added then both. So issue open time and the pull request open time. Yeah. yeah. And for the other, the, like the bus factor, uh, we just define like what it is. Uh, All right, can, we, can we back up just a little bit? Yep. Because I don't think open time was one of the metrics. Um, uh, it's a, yeah, that's the thing I wanna discuss with you uh, a little bit. So 
if yeah. you if you open up the starter uh yep yeah because um oh, i guess i yeah, didn't close yeah, because yeah, i had that, that one yeah, the definition is like um, we just want to uh, calculate the time between the pull request when it's created until it's closed. Okay. But uh, the thing is that, um, you know, in the past 90 days, for example, if uh, there are 10 pull requests created and one of them just uh, uh, closed it within one day, for the rest of the other pull request, it ha haven't been uh, handled or, or closed for for like uh, uh, 30 days or 40 days. So if we only consider the, the closed time, then what we got is just one one day in average or median time. But if we calculate the open days uh, together with other, you know, uh, nine pull requests who haven't been closed yet in the past 90 days, we exactly know how efficiency of this uh, uh, request uh, pro process uh, situation mm -hmm. in this community. So that's why we, we define this as a pull request uh, open time instead of closed time. Because in, uh, in many cases, we saw that uh, if we only considered the closed time, it would uh, mis uh, misleading something about it. Yeah. No, I absolutely agree with this. I'm I'm actually using this very differently than than the way I've defined it in the metrics model. And I'm trying to remember exactly why I did that. I think it was um partly because we we didn't have a metrics, a metric defined exactly. So sorry, let me just back way up. Um so <laughs> when I when I use this, what I was trying to get at with this one with time to close is that. It's not actually time to close that I'm looking at. I'm looking at in a particular time frame, do you close about as many issues as you have open? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's basically about keeping up with your, um, in my case, pull requests. But to your point, I like that you're looking at issues and pull requests together because I think that's a better picture. Um, but I, you know, I'm kind of, this one for me was more about, are you keeping up with, um, with things and and the reason I used closed instead of open was um, because I want to encourage people to close pull requests even if they're not going to merge them because what you get a lot in open source projects is people just neglect the pull requests they don't know what to do with um, mm -hmm. forever and so they just mm -hmm. so you just sit around this pile of neglected pull requests that realistically are just never going to be merged but nobody wants to. Nobody wants to tell someone who worked really hard on something, hey, I can't take this because. Right. Um, mm -hmm. so, so the idea was I used closed because I, I wanted to encourage that, that behavior. Um, uh -huh. I also, Yuhui, completely agree with you that if you're just looking at time to close, it's probably not a great, a great metric for, for the reason that you, the reasons that you talked about. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not sure. I guess I'm not sure what what to do with this one. Mm -hmm. uh, how about this? Actually, for the pull request and the, and the issue, it's kind of different with each other because for the issue, we are thinking for the update the issue state because not all the issues are the bug fix or CVE like uh, this type of. Uh, issue we, we we are thinking for quickly uh, close or resolve this issue, but some issue is is related to the feature request. It's a it's a bunch of it's a it's a release cycle, so it's uh, it's hard hard to follow the, the 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 project planning. So we don't always close the, as soon as possible. We just update that. So. Yeah, you are right. Not, not, not. There's always not one. There's no one metric could cover all the cases we have. Um, 
Yeah, I think maybe we just pick the most likely thing and and cover that in the um, in, in compass. That that would be that would be kind of what what I would think. But but like you said, I think I think that's a really important point that you made about the issues. Uh, we do this a lot within CNCF projects where we'll open an issue to have some gigantic big discussion about something, and those are intended to live for months in a lot of cases. So closing those quickly isn't a um, isn't a best practice, for example, especially, and like you said, the same thing is true around, you know, feature, feature mm -hmm. discussion. Mm -hmm. Time to close. Okay, so uh, how about, uh, except for the, except for the time to close metric, we add another metric to support the case you mentioned, like um, how many pull requests we created in the past 90 days. Meanwhile, uh, you know, uh, how, uh, part of them has been closed or rejected, or anyway, it's handled finally in the past 90 days. We mm -hmm. can add this ratio. And together with uh, the pull request time to close, this metric is more or less to could uh, reflect the current status at least in the past ninety days. In the past ninety days, yeah. And the way the specifically the way I measure this is I I look um, so I look at a month. I do this uh, for for uh, across each month uh -huh. for twelve months. But yeah. I look at yeah. the total number of pull requests um, mm -hmm. in that month. And I, mm -hmm. then I look at the total number of pull requests that were closed in that month. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And then it's, it's basically, I, I just subtract the two, frankly. Yeah. To, to, uh, I, I graph them together so that you can look at how big that gap is. Uh -huh. uh, okay, I know. So how about we use one ratio and one close time and uh, we pro provide another, the total number of pull requests created in the last months and, and, and the, the ones that has been has been solved. We add two more uh, metric mm -hmm. to surround this, uh, you know, perspective. Well, I wonder if we actually change this. I wonder instead of saying time to close, maybe we rewrite that metric to be more the one that we just just described. Do we have a metric that's defined that way? I think probably. I, I think so. I, that would be uh, what Don. I do. I do think there was one in evolution. Yeah, I know there's some change requests, like change requests accepted and change requests. Like there's a bunch around change requests. What is that one that just says change requests? Yeah, it could be a parameter in here. Or, uh... Yeah, like we mentioned in the, in the last months, how many change requests has been created, right? Let's scroll down a little bit to implementation. Uh, aggregators, a period of time, okay. That's not, that's, I don't see it there. Could you, could somebody describe from this conversation what the metric is that you're kind of, or two metrics that you're kind of looking for? Um, for pull requests, it's time to close from the time a PR is open until the time that's either merged or closed without merging. And, to Don's point, often the, the ones that aren't merged for the longest period of time, uh, usually they're, they, they're more likely to not, never get merged. Okay. But 
this time to close doesn't actually get at what I'm what about that? Measuring what, what I think is important. Um, Change request duration, that sounds ambiguous enough to be it. No. Uh, change request the duration is more like the open, uh, the pull request open time yeah. we, we implemented for, for this one. Okay, could, um, could I ask something then? Could either Don or Yahui somewhere in here in the minutes, could you like just add a brief narrative as to what it is that you would be looking for in a metric? Yeah, I can do that. I can better document what it is that I what it is okay. that I. That would be super super helpful. Okay, and you can kind of see it. Like if you look at the um, the graphic in that metric, you can kind of kind of see it. I think. Which metric? Sorry, in the model. In the model. Graphics in the metric model. Like this kind of stuff. Yeah, so it's it's this one. It's time to close. So you can see there's a total pull request, um, and um, and the green dotted line is the ones that were closed. How about we add an, another actual lines about time to close, right? Because in currently we we saw two lines. One is um, you know, the created the total in created in total, and the the the, the, the other line is about to close the pull request. And we can add an actual line about uh, the time to close. In one month. What do you think, Don? Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure. I mean, I think I mean, from from my perspective, uh, yeah, I don't know why I wrote this the way I did. Now that now that you've poked some holes in it, um, because it's not about time to close. I don't actually care how long it takes to close a pull request because there there are some pull requests that are just going to get merged or closed immediately. There are some mm -hmm. that are going to hang around for a long time because um, you know of the nature of a particular type of pull request. Um, what I what I care about is that they're keeping up with the pull requests. Is they're closing about as many as they're getting um, in. Okay. Which is which is a different metric than what I've described here. But you can kind of see based on the graph what I what I meant by it. We need a metric like keeping up with PRs. <laughs> it's basically yeah. that's that is what it, that is what the line shows. That's okay. That's great. This is actually, I think this is a great example of why the the lab at Compass is so helpful. Yeah. So how about if I, let me think about this just a little bit. And how about if I propose something that's more like what I actually meant and propose it just as an individual metric within common. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. And then once, once we get that proposed and we decide that, yes, it's, um, reasonable, then we can update the metric model to use the other metric instead of time to close. Does that seem like a reasonable approach? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Like, like, like Mac mentioned, that's how Compass work. Like, that's how Compass Lab work, actually. We really want uh, to find out uh, the concurrent uh, way to, to, to to find the, the, the final answer. Yeah, this has been this has been a great discussion for sure. Um, and we probably wouldn't have had this had you not started to implement it in, in Compass. So this is, yeah, this is great. And also I have another question in the all the metrics under this metrics model. So timeline we defined in the past 90 days, but what, but you just mentioned what you care about is one month. In your time time frame, so um, is it too much difference between in the past ninety days or or in the past thirty days? So that might no, I think that's fine. If you think ninety days um, seems reasonable for um, for your purposes, I think we can use that in Compass. I think people people adjust time frames based on what they want to look at. 
and you know, 90 days is perfectly reasonable. It's, you know, roughly a, roughly a quarter. Okay. So I think, yeah, I think that's fine. I wouldn't change that. Yeah, because in, in all the other metrics under the, the metrics model implemented in the compass, we always use in the in the past ninety days because in in each of single time time spot, you can find you know good enough time range to to find some problem or uh, trend. Yeah, no, I think that's good. I mean, I think ninety days gets around some of the problems that we have. You know, like the the natural dip that we get in December. January and you know holidays in the summer and things like that. So I think ninety days is is good. Mm -hmm. Don, I have a quick right. question. Sorry, yeah. maybe you said this, Don, but um, is there a number that you're looking for um, that would be like a, a like best like what's your target number for that total number of PRs in a month minus the total number closed? I, Do to... I don't actually have a number for that because I think that it depends a lot on the type of project. Okay. So, just... For example, super high volume project like Kubernetes um, is going to have, it, it, they're going to get behind more quickly than a small project that gets a handful of pull requests. Okay. So just... uh, what, I, what I look for is, is the trend. So, uh, you know, are they continuing to close about as many as they have open or is that gap getting really big mm -hmm. and that's how I look at all the metrics right like time to first response I mean we have two business days is kind of our internal guideline but I I think looking at trends are more important than than looking at hard numbers okay thanks Don yeah. all right uh great discussion all right we have just two minutes left and I think we have a blog post is that correct correct uh my colleague just uh, helped help me to write write down this um, blog um uh, we uh, it's about the launch event of oss compass ha happened just uh, this in the last uh, tuesday uh yeah tuesday so i would like to uh, post it uh, in the in our chaos blog and we produced the, the whole things go, going on under this event. And also mentioned that uh, uh, Chaos uh, would uh, collaborate with uh, with Compass to broadcast uh, metrics and metrics model all over the world, especially in China. Well, uh, yes, <laughs> Elizabeth is on. So I think that's, that shouldn't be a problem getting this posted as a blog and is there anything you need Elizabeth uh, I think I think that we can get this um, posted no problem what I'll do Yahoi is post a link to this in our um, communications slack communications group just so they kind of know and I'll put it we have a spreadsheet where we keep track of what's coming up and so I'll put it in there um, <clears throat> and then somebody will look at this and just make sure that, you know, it's good to go. And then we'll all go ahead and post it. And you said you are the author of this. I don't know if WordPress will let us do two authors, but you said you are an author. Uh, I, I'm a wild author. There's one uh, lady uh, from, my, from my team who had bought it uh, together with me. I can add her name. And this, but I, 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 I'm not sure the blog post should need a name or author name. So I didn't add any name of us here. We can we can also post it just like as the Compass community or something or chaos, like we can put whatever. So yeah, we can figure that out. No worries. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then Yahoo, are you hoping we broadcast this on social as well from chaos because I think that's normally what we do anyway isn't it Elizabeth with our blog posts it is yeah it goes to Twitter automatically and then we'll post to LinkedIn and Mastodon as well um and then it'll put, so. yeah it'll go yeah. in the newsletter um and then uh, it kind of also links to slack um we can start a new discourse um a thread as well we usually do one with a blog post too so hopefully that Thank covers you. some bases oh yeah, yeah. All right. Is that good, Yahui? Thank you. That's okay. right. Okay, great. Well, we're at the end of our time. This was great. I enjoy the new meeting time personally, which is great. Uh, 
So, all right. Well, thank you everybody for just some amazing stuff and a great conversation today. Uh, I think we all have a little bit of some things to do and we'll see you all in a couple of weeks on this call. All right. See you in a couple of weeks. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.